we are taking uh, class 12th computer science c++ this is unit number 1 which is the object oriented programming in c++ c++ is an object oriented programming language we are taking the the first uh, edition that is the chapter 1 the revision tour of class 11th Whatever we have learned in class 11, we will try to revise it so that we can get on to the advanced things in C++. Keywords. What are the keywords? See, a programming language always have certain words which is known to the compiler. These are reserved for them. So, keywords are nothing but the reserved words that has a special meaning that conveys to the compiler or compiler understand these by certain way. So, these are the reserved words for special purpose doing something and uh, it not it should not be used as an identifier name. For example, if you can use if right, but since if is a keyword you cannot use it. You will be tempted to use Keywords like this do, but these are keywords. Identifiers. So, these identifiers are the names which you give because you are going to use variables, the function names, the arrays, the objects in the classes. So, there will be various names. For that, you need to have certain way to identify them, and identifiers does exactly the same. So, it may contain the digits, letters, and underscore, but it must begin with a letter or an underscore. You cannot start it with any number or a numeral. C++ is case sensitive. That means if you write uppercase, it will be very different from the lowercase. So a keyword cannot be used as an identifier as we, as we just indicated. So there are certain uh, valid identifiers which I can discuss, which is this PEN time 58T. All these are valid because it is starting from the underscore they are using alphanumeric but they are not starting from numeral the number they, they should not start from number this is the only and only rule which needs to be understood the data types in c++ data types are what for any data what kind of space you will need in the memory and there are certain operations which can be tried upon or operated upon the number of uh, variables and identifiers. So, data types in C++ are basically of two types. First is your built-in data types. We also call it as a fundamental uh, fundamental data types. So, these data types are already known to the compiler. Compiler is aware of these data types and these are not composed of any other data types. So, we have certain fundamental data types in C++ like the int integer for integer data type. For characters, we have char. For floating point numbers, we have float. Double, we have double data type. And uh, the data type uh, also can be modified depending upon the size which you would like to use. So, data type modifiers, there are different um, modifiers which you can employ in C++. And this is signed, unsigned long and short. So, in order to modify the size so that you can fit in certain situation, a sign, unsign, long, short can be used. Variables. Now, any memory location in memory is identified by a certain name. So, a name memory location is exactly, you know, the content of that, that name can change. Say, I, if I Say this memory location is named as say my variable, okay, and my v. Now the value is not two; it can be changed to three. So that is why we call it as a variable. The came uh, the no, name has uh, come up from vary, so it can vary. So variable is uh, essentially an identifier only that will denote a storage location which contains, or you can say, the contents can be. A change or varied during the program execution. 
and what are the declarations of a variable how you are going to declare the variable so the syntax is quite easy you have to first give the data type then followed by the variable name number of variables you can give so there there are there is no limitation just separate them by comma and end them with their semicolon you can also initialize a variable while you are declaring it using this data type should be here then you, this should be the variable name and you can use this equality operator and then the value can be assigned so in c++ you these declaration and initialization it can be done simultaneously right uh, where the place is you are going to use for the first time which was not possible in c c language the language which was prior to c++ and this is known as dynamic initialization for example this is float average now this average you are saying sum by count so the above two statements these two can be combined like this float avg is equal to sum by count this you can easily use now coming to constants a name memory location which contains uh, or you can say the contents cannot be changed in the program execution is called the constant because the things cannot be changed the contents cannot be changed so a constant is again an identifier which is showing you a memory location which is pointing to a or naming a storage location but the contents cannot be verified so if you have two you have name as my variable and if it is given as constant c on s t in front of it you cannot change the content the compiler will indicate an error so the syntax for constant declaration is quite easy you just have to use this cunst then followed by the data types then the constant name with equality sign to the value so this is the example const float pi you don't want to change the pi value in your program so 3.14f this you can give then we have a conditional operator when we will talk about the the different uh, you know conditional operators you can say the control structure you will be able to understand it better why because this is a short form of if and else only so by for now the conditional operator this one is question mark and then colon and we have content here like this this is also known as a ternary operator so it required three operands the general form is quite simple this is the expression if this expression is true it will give you because this is a logical expression it's going to give you either true or false so if true if the this expression is true this expression will be executed otherwise this expression will be executed you can also assign it to some value that is if you say a less than b so if your a is less than b a will be assigned to min otherwise b will be assigned to min so if expression this a less than b is true the value of a will be assigned otherwise b will be assigned so this is a simple conditional operator you can write this if else in one line then we have type conversion say you have various data type now you uh, want to deal in your program in the course of your program you might want to change your flow to double double to integer like this right so for that what you are going to use you you are going to use and compiler will also do something so the process of converting one predefined data type into some other predefined data type is known as type conversion so c++ provide us with two forms of conversion which is the implicit data type or implicit type conversion and explicit type conversion so what is the implicit type conversion see you don't have to intervene without your intervention means programmer's intervention this implicit type conversion is there so whenever we have intermix of various data types in an expression this kind of implicit type conversion takes place so the c++ compiler converts all the operands into the largest data type operand please understand if you have integer you have float and say you have a double in an expression all these kind of data type data type variables are there so all these will be converted to doubles so the highest promotion will be there then we have explicit type conversion in this explicit type conversion 
the user defined you know because it is user defined so you will force certain data type to be changed by yourself then type casting the explicit type conversion of an operand is done by the type casting method how this is done what you have to do this type casting operator you have this type uh, casting operator this will allow you to convert in a data item into another data type item for that the expression or the identifier must be preceded by the name of the desired data type enclosed in a parenthesis so it should be inside a parenthesis which is actually the round bracket you can say parenthesis and round brackets are similar so this is your expression you want to implicitly change it to certain data type so that that data type has to come you know as a prefix or prior to this expression in the parenthesis this so i'll give an example uh, the data type you see this is x plus y by 2 and uh, you whatever the result is you want to convert say x and y are integers say then you want to change forcefully the content here to float for that you just have to write float inside the parenthesis in front of this x plus y by 2 there are some important syntax in c++ that will come across that is if statement so that is if means if something happens then what to do and if something doesn't happen then what to do so both ways if it is yes where to go if it is no so certain ways there you know some certain condition is there so, so i write condition if it is yes or if it is no where we have to go if it is yes that is if this condition inside is true we execute these all these expressions or all these uh, you can say statements otherwise if this fails else you go with these statements so these are the you know uh, what i'm trying to uh, you know explain here is you can write one one statement you don't need to use this uh, these round brackets if you have more than one statement you need to use this uh, not round bracket but these are curly braces and in the case uh, this condition fails it is not true then you come to or the compiler will transfer its control to the else one right so this if by itself is uh, complete you don't need to use else you need else only when you want something to be done when the condition fails also then we have if else if ladder that means if certain condition is met it is okay if does if it doesn't meet then you want to check for another condition and if these two condition doesn't meet you want to check for certain other condition for that you use if else if ladder for that you just write else if that is you take if and else if construct if else construct will be something uh, similar to what we have learned about if else but because if checks for something and something and if it fails it checks for something but here we want to check for some other condition also for that we use else if that is the condition too likewise we go and finally you can have else or you can not have else this is optional then we have a switch statement you can say this is a more elegant and faster way to implement your if else or else if ladder how to do, do this you say switch then you have expression or variable this expression should give you only integer or a character value this switch will only work for integer or character value it will not work for double or float for that if this this matches with certain case so we have different cases actually this is called a switch case construct so if you uh, have certain variable or this amounts to certain variable or character you have the various values inside your case this is case this this is case this and uh, which case does it match that will be executed and we have a break uh, for this if say for example we have a value 2 here and this after this case we have a 2 here so this will match and this will be executed and then we break and we come out if no condition meets then you can have a default or you can have an optional default now the for loop this for loop is a very elegant loop the reason is that the initialization the condition where the loop is going to come out and the update expression that is the increment and decrement you will find it in one line this is the entry control loop 
and all the content that is the statement are written in this braces. Then we have while loop. While loop again is the entry control loop and we have the loop condition here, loop body. This initialization has to be written above this while loop and the update has to be done somewhere inside. Do while loop, do while loop, you know unlike the for and while loop, though do while loop is exactly similar to for and while, but just one difference that this loop is the exit control loop. That is, the condition is checked after once, at least once, the do while has taken place. So, loop condition is here. So, do then while inside this brace you write your statements here. Break statement and one more important thing is when we are dealing with the loop constructs or control structures, we need to come out means looping is done again and again, iteration is done again and again, but at some point we need to come out or at some point we don't want that loop to run. For that we have this break statement and continue statement. With this big break statement it will enable us as a programmer to skip over a part of the code. So a uh, break statement, the innermost loop, the innermost loop is broken. That is, you come out of the innermost loop. That break, if it is enclosed in say while, do while, or same switch statement, and the execution resumes at this statement, which is exactly or immediately following the body of the terminated statement. That is, once you come out of the loop. The next statement after the loop is going to be executed. For example, this is the working of break statement. We have a while statement here, and in this while statement, we are testing something. This is a statement. So, here, if the value is greater than 2000, then we break. Then we break, and if we break, it will, it will not go to any other statement after this. It will go to the statement which is after this closing brace. Similarly, when we say break, this is the for loop example. We have all the initialization and expression and then update and this checking. So, this is a statement this is going to run if now we are checking the same condition for with a break. If this condition is true, then we are going to come out and this statement is nothing but the statement which is after this brace. Similarly, with do while exactly similar way we are going to run it. Then the continue statement. See, you want to run the loop from 1 to 10, but you don't want to do anything for 2 or say 7. So, this loop is going to run from 1 to 10. How to skip the, the execution for 2 and 7? For that, we use the continue statement. So the continue is going to jump or you, this is again a kind of jump statement. This is just like break statement, uh, but uh, you know, this break statement is going to skip or it will going it is going to take you out of the loop but continue will not take you out of the loop but it will continue the iterations or the looping only that part at which this continue is applied will not be executed or anything which is after that continue will not be executed so we need we don't need the termination for that we need break but if you just want to go to the next iteration we, we use the continuous statement. So, this is the example of the continuous statement. We have a while here and this is a statement. This is a if condition. So, if, if condition condition is true and if we go to continue, we just do not go to this condition or this statement. We go to the next iteration. We do not come out of the loop. I hope you got the idea. This is same for for and do that if this condition is true, we continue. That means, we just keep the part after or anything which is after continue and before braces, we just skip them and again go back to the next next iteration similar with the do and operation. So, this is the first part uh, of the revision tool of C++ of class 11th. We will be taking one more till then. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.